Hello everyone and welcome to our webinar today, full-time or part-time MBA, which is right for you. Uh, my name is Nelia and I'll be the moderator on behalf of UniMy team and I'm here with a few very interesting guests. Uh, first, I want to present Lawrence Wilson, a Senior Marketing Manager at ESMT Berlin, who is going to talk about how the ESMT MBA programs has been designed to help you develop the skills and experience you need to move ahead in your career. Uh, the conversation will join two um, ESMT students, Ankit Rawat, um, Head Ambassador of the Full-Time MBA, and Max Han, a part-time MBA student. I can't wait to hear what you have to share with us, guys. But before that, uh, to everyone who is listening, you can ask questions anytime during the webinar using the Q&A box, and we'll take time, time to answer at the end of the session. All questions are welcome, so don't hesitate. Uh, I think that everything is set now, so I'm giving the word to you, Lawrence. Fantastic. <clears throat> Thank you, Nelly. And uh, thanks, everyone, for joining us. And thanks very much for uh, Ankit and uh, Max for taking their time today. Um, so I'm just going to share my screen quickly. So I'm just going to give a very kind of brief overview to um, uh, ASMT as a school, sort of who we are our history and what we do, and then also to sort of touch on quickly the um, the different MBA programs that we have. Now, obviously, uh, these guys are the experts when it comes to the sort of lived experience of the MBAs, but hopefully I can give you some sort of uh, top level information as well. So in terms of who the school are, um, this sort of shiny campus facade on the uh, on the right hand side here, this is our, our front door, this is the campus building. Um, we've been uh, in this building since uh, the school was founded about 20 years ago. Um, and for anyone who's interested in learning where that is in relation to the rest of Berlin, we are essentially uh, right at the bottom of this tall pointy thing on the left hand side that puts us very much right in the center of town. Um, and uh, we're, we're not really in Berlin by accident. We're, we're in the center of town, we're in the center of Europe. Uh, and the reason we're in Berlin is because um, when the school was founded by this group of multinational corporations, they wanted to place the school somewhere that was uh, a real sort of up and coming place, uh, the center of a lot of um, industry, not so much at that time, but definitely these days, and uh, the center of a lot of politics in Europe as well. Um, the reason that the school was founded was uh, this group of corporations, uh, they decided that they weren't necessarily happy with the graduates that they were receiving from other MBA programs. So they decided to just cut out the middleman and do it themselves. And originally we were providing education just for their employees. Since then we've expanded out and we've expanded our range of programs. And as you'll see today, we're, we're much more than just a, a sort of single MBA school. We now have uh, MBAs delivered in a multiple different formats. Um, but one thing you should see running through all of our programs is this sort of uh, curriculum focus. So leadership, innovation and analytics. And hopefully that comes through again and again and again, regardless of which program you are studying with us. Uh, now, we always say you shouldn't put too much stock in rankings. There are, there are lots more important reasons to, to choose one school over another, but um, they do give you a kind of pretty good idea about the kind of company that a school keeps. And, and we're quite proud of this uh, most recent ranking. So for the last three years, we've been ranked as number one in Germany by the Financial Times. Um, this ranking comes out at the end of the year, so it came out in December 21, and we're looking forward to uh, the next one in December 22. Um, we actually moved up from number nine to number seven in Europe uh, this year as well. So again, like I said, it doesn't necessarily mean that we are you know, better than whoever's in number eight, but um, uh, it does mean that you know, once you get to that sort of top 10, top 20, um, you know, those are the kinds of uh, uh, sort of uh, company that we keep at that level. Uh, we're also triple accredited. So we have this, uh, this triple crown of accreditation. Um, so we're accredited by AACSB, AMBA and Equus. Um, what that means is we're sort of one of around 100 schools in the world who have this, um, this, this uh, triple crown accreditation. But what it means is wherever you work in the world, wherever you end up after graduation or, or during your studies, uh, your degree will be recognized. Now, um, these are the uh, MBA programs that we're here to discuss today. So full-time versus part-time versus online versus executive. There's a lot of different, uh, there's a lot of choice out there, um, but I can kind of run you through some of the uh, some of the highlights here. So uh, the Global Online MBA, if we start on the very far left, um, that's our newest program. Uh, it's been launched uh, about two years ago. The idea is it's our most flexible program. So uh, we take our already very successful MBA and part-time MBA curriculum, but we deliver it in a fully online format. So if you're based somewhere else in the world and you don't necessarily... Uh, want to move to Berlin or, or come to Berlin that often, this is the course for you because it allows you to uh, study uh, fully online, fully remotely. Um, it means that your, uh, your, your, your group, your group of fellow students will be 
very diverse, very spread out around the world. Um, and uh, uh, it also has a little bit of extra flexibility built into the curriculum. So it's designed, if you did it from start to finish, to take 24 months. But you can also pause modules. You can take a step back from a module. You can come back in. You can sort of study at your own pace uh, for a maximum of up to 60 months, 60 months. So there's a bit more flexibility built into that. Now, moving on to the to the part time MBA and uh, Max is a part time MBA student. So um, apologies if I get any of this wrong, Max, you can correct me later. Um, but this is uh, for those who, who do want um, a degree of independent study, about 75 percent of the course is done online or remotely, but also want some face to face uh, in person networking and teaching as well. So the part time MBA brings the class together for weekend long modules once every, I think, four to six weeks. Um, so. You still get the flexibility of your online and, and remote learning, but you also get the benefits of uh, the face-to-face -face networking as well. Now, the full-time MBA is the very other extreme. Uh, so that is for those who, who want to really throw themselves into the program, um, who, who want to quit their jobs, relocate, you know, move to Berlin full-time and study full-time. It's a 15-month program. It's very intense. I think Hank can probably attest to that. Um, but the idea is that whilst you're here studying with us on the full-time MBA, you're not doing anything else you're not sort of working at the same time there's plenty of other sort of bits built in, into that as well there's extracurricular things there's um, new things that we're bringing in like uh, international exchanges and internships and that sort of thing but the idea is that you are in berlin for the majority of your of your studies uh, and then on the very far right the executive mba now this is for a slightly different profile of student probably not something that we'll touch on too much today. Um, this is more for people who have a bit more experience. Um, for the MBAs, the average work experience is somewhere between sort of seven and 10 years. For the executive MBAs, the minimum work experience is seven or eight years, and you do need to have some managerial experience as well. This is the, MBA, the executive MBAs for more for those who are interested in taking that very final step to the very, very top table of, uh, of management, whereas the MBA suites are more for those who, who want to make a change, who want to accelerate their career, who want to sort of take what they've already achieved, which is reasonably significant, but really uh, put some rocket fuel in it and, and, and either change or accelerate something as they go. So those are our MBA suites. Uh, that is the, um, uh, the, um, the sort of school as a whole. Um, this may be a little bit premature, but just so that people are aware of how our application cycle runs, uh, we have a lot of deadlines coming up uh, soon. So for the online MBA starting in September and for the part-time MBA starting in October, our next deadlines are a few weeks away or uh, more less than a few weeks away. It's on Monday for the part-time MBA. Um, so if you are interested in applying for those, we do have some final seats available. So uh, there is still time. Um, we'll reopen applications for the next year's program once these uh, close. The full-time MBA begins in January, so we still have a bit of time left for that, but the next application deadline coming up is on August 17th. There are a couple of extra application deadlines after that as well. Uh, and for the executive MBA, which begins in September, the final application deadline is September 1st. So um, apologies if these if these dates scare you a little bit, if they look a bit intimidating, don't worry, there is still time to, to get everything put together. Uh, but just so you're aware, that is the, um, the sort of deadline uh, run over the next few weeks. Okay, that's not a, that's enough from me. Um, I will hand back over to uh, to Nelly. But um, just so everyone's aware, if if you do have a question today that you don't get a chance to get answered, or um, or if you want to sort of follow up with anything else, uh, you can get in touch with us here at admissions.degrees at ESMT. Uh, .org. We're always very happy to hear from candidates, um, especially if you've come to an event or something like this. Um, so yeah, don't be a stranger if, if there is a follow up after this that you'd like to get in touch with us about. Thank you very much for this uh, short introduction, Lawrence. Um, okay, guys, let's uh, get into a um, discussion of your experience, and I suggest we start with the basics. Um, so a first question for Ankit and, and Max. Uh, maybe you just uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, why did you decide to do an MBA in the first place, and why did you choose ESMT Berlin in particular? <laughs> Who wants to start? <laughs> Let's go alphabetically. Let's, I, could start. I, I can start. Yes, for sure. Uh, so the MBA, I mean, I used to work, uh, I was living and working in Dubai. Uh, I was, I had been living there for about 14 years and I was bored in, in essence uh, from the place. And I wanted to, you know, do something more meaningful in my life. And uh, I started researching things around what I wanted to do, which was more in uh, the, uh, 
NGO or or the NPO sector, which is the non for profit sector, and uh, Berlin in terms of uh, education for for the underprivileged had a lot uh, to offer. Uh, and I connected with a lot of like minded people, and uh, some of them happened to be ESMT alumni members, and uh, that prompted me to uh, to pursue the MBA and look at ESMT Berlin as uh, the school of uh, first choice for myself. And uh, then when I started evaluating the university in terms of uh, what all the MBA program had to offer, uh, it hit all, uh, I think, almost all the points uh, that uh, were important to me, which were uh, a smaller cohort size. I didn't want to be a part of a thousand uh, plus cohort like people in Harvard happened to be in. And I wanted to have a much more personalized connection with uh, my fellow cohort members and uh, just the way the school responded. I mean, Stephanie and uh, Anda at the time were amazing at uh, responding to all my questions and my queries and they put me in touch with the right people uh, very quickly. And uh, that sort of was a very welcoming feeling and and that prompted me to, uh, you know, like, only look at ESMT uh, for for my MBA studies. So yeah, I mean, in essence, uh, ESMT sort of uh, from the very beginning sort of ma made it very, very cordial in terms of my interaction with not just uh, the staff uh, in ESMT, but also uh, people associated with ESMT who were studying there and, and who had studied there in the past. So. Yeah. Should I continue? Okay. Um, yeah, first of all, thanks for the introduction, uh, Lawrence and Nelly. Um, my name is Max. Um, I work in the payment sector currently at uh, Deutsche Bank. Um, I don't have a streamlined CV whatsoever. Um, I've been working for an NGO at some point and uh, yeah, many other uh, uh, companies and and so on um, throughout my career and the idea of doing an MBA was in it has been in the back of my head yeah for, for a long time and uh, at some point um, I did, did some more intense uh, research and uh, I mean there's a, a myriad of programs out there right uh, full-time part-time uh, whatsoever um, and uh, what eventually convinced me of the ESMT was uh, that um, like was was their part time MBA, um, because for me I decided that I did not want to go um, out of my job for uh, a whole year. Um, it, it just yeah I don't know it didn't didn't sit well with me. I would rather wanted to do something to do that I uh, something that I could do in parallel to my job. Um, as a matter of fact, I am at the office right now, so I'm sitting in some kind of um, utility room, so to say, if you can, what you can see behind me. Um, and uh, yeah, so uh, MBA, I wanted to, indeed to um, accelerate my career, to um, open up a few new doors, maybe, um, and uh, not only by the by virtue of uh, having an MBA degree um, in the end, um, but also through um, maybe some network um, and connections that you um that you get uh, throughout the program um and here i think um the ranking of the school does matter a bit um of course it, it's not really necessary uh, not really a big difference if their school is ranked uh, sixth or eighth place or so in europe um but um you can see it uh, at some career fairs for example that are organized and um, the type of companies that are present there um, and I do think that this uh, relates to the to the ranking at, at least to a, to a certain degree. Um, but what really convinced me about the SMT was uh, basically the um, uh, yes uh, the uh, a, a testimony, so to say, uh, from a former alumni. Um, and uh, this person, like a, a good friend of mine and former colleague as well, uh, he didn't do an MBA as such, um, but he did a, a couple of summer schools. And not only at, at the ESMT, but also at Boston Business School and in St. Gall. And he said that uh, the way the program was designed from the learning effect, uh, the ESMT was actually the best of the three. So uh, again, it's not an, uh, an MBA program, um, but at least he got some firsthand experience of three different business schools, renowned business schools. And this eventually was then um, 
the reason why I focused on ESMT Berlin. Um, I also did not uh, apply um, anywhere else. And yeah, that's how I um, ended up um, in the part-time program because it was my personal decision and the ESMT, uh, which was majorly because of um, a personal experience of a very good friend of mine. Thank you very much, guys. Uh, now that we have covered the, the basics, let, let's dive in even um, deeper in your experience. Maybe you can share us with us what, what's your favorite experience so far? What do you think about the, the school environment, the classes? Um... The school environment is, uh, is amazing. I mean, having, <clears throat> having spent a lot of time away from the whole learning curve or uh, you know, being in a school where you're learning and you're you're not doing anything else but uh, essentially sitting in a class, listening to the professors and interacting with uh, the fellow cohort members. It was very refreshing at uh, the beginning, and like Lauren said, it uh, the full time MBA is is a roller coaster ride, and uh, at the beginning it was very stressful. So, uh, I mean having worked in in various multinationals you you kind of get uh, the understanding of stress but this was a completely different level of stress uh, that we are talking about and uh, mm -hmm. dealing with that and seeing everyone uh, dealing with the same situations differently same situations differently uh, was i think a very very nice thing to to see uh, because you get to learn a lot more about uh, about someone or about uh, your your friends and and your colleagues uh, based on how they handle different situations and i think that was uh, th those moments for me uh, were were some of the highlight moments uh, so far uh, working in groups having being forced to work into pe into groups people you might not essentially get along with uh, at at certain levels but because you've been put into that team and you don't have a say on whether you want to be in that team or not, you got to be in that team and you got to make it work somehow. That was fun in a certain way and uh, very nice. Yeah, I mean, it's, 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 been, it's been very nice. And the classroom environment, I mean, every time I talk about the professors, I, I have to say, I, I'm amazed by uh, every single professor. I had zero knowledge of, let's say, accountancy or, or uh, finance. And uh, the level of detail and the level of attention that uh, uh, the professors paid into <laughs> ensuring that we got what was needed in terms of the basics and, and the basic principles was amazing. It's, it's not just what you do in class. It, you, I mean, we approached our, our professors even after class and they were very open about it because they understand that, okay, I'm an engineering student. I have no knowledge of accountancy or I've never dealt with numbers the way accountants deal with numbers. So they understand that and, and they, they appreciate that you take the effort to come and talk to them after, uh, you know, uh, after the normal classroom hours. And that was, that was very nice. It, it still happens, and every time it happens, it's a great experience. Over to you, Max. Thanks. Um, yeah, we're going uh, in a similar vein. Um, I would uh, also say that the learning experience is, is really great. And um, in part of MBA, it's yeah, 75, 80% is remote or online. Um, still, the professors are extremely responsive, like, uh, especially in one class in particular. Even, I remember, if, uh, I mean, I do by design a lot of studies like uh, well after work and sometimes in, in, into the evening um, because there is a lot to do. Uh, don't underestimate that. So it is like an, um, actually like a proper study that, that you're doing. And uh, um, especially like me, I was, I was not exposed to many of the topics uh, there in my professional life so far. Um, but anyway, so uh, the professors, they're really uh, responsive. Um, for example, on Friday night at midnight or so, you write an email and literally 10 minutes uh, later, you have an answer explaining everything you needed to know. It was almost like an uh, automatic reply. <laughs> it was a bit, uh, a bit scary almost. Um, anyway, um, so that's a great learning experience. And uh, what goes probably a bit more for the part-time MBA than the full-time MBA um, are the so-called residencies, like the, the in-person classes. 
Um, it's, uh, it, I think it's in uh, like seven weekends a year, um, then we, we all meet in person. Um, and it always goes from uh, Thursday, uh, Thursday afternoon until Saturday evening. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, these, it's, it's just great when you see everybody in, in person and uh, pretty much everyone has a, is very uh, open minded and is in a collaborative way because in the end, it's, it's not a competition, this whole, this whole study thing. And uh, so it's, um, that's, uh, that's very easy going, uh, everything. And yeah, so these experiences are really great. Um, and um, something that, uh, uh, Lawrence, you can maybe add next time to your presentation and because um, there is not only a campus in Berlin, um, but also in Munich for the part time MBA, MBA students. And I am based in Munich. Um, so that was also, as a matter of fact, um, a reason why I chose this program because uh, yeah, it's just uh, far easier in terms of, of traveling. Um, but in, in Munich, the study group is uh, smaller than in Berlin, uh, which leads to an even greater learning experience because um, yeah, you're just a, a smaller class, you're more hands on, you're also forced to uh, participate and pay attention and everything and yeah just even a more one-to-one -one relationship um, with uh, with the professors and their assistants um yeah so again the, these residencies they're really great um some i think once or twice a year um they uh, ask everyone to come to berlin uh, and then it's, it's of course it's just great and then these events are used mainly for networking so it's not like after residencies that that people go home and then continue to study so that's then clearly for networking going out you name it so um, this is uh, what i would point out thank you very much for these uh, very positive answers um okay let's see then uh, how busy are you uh, during um, your mba programs do you have time for family and activities outside of the classroom and i think this is uh, two, two different experience for, for the two of you yeah, uh, I mean, in the first uh, three months, it's it's very busy. It is extremely busy. But uh, I mean, if you if you're able to manage your time well, uh, it it I mean, things things go along very smoothly. I know people who uh, had been doing uh, their part time work student positions from the very onset of of the program. Uh, they were dedicating ten hours a week to uh to their job as well as doing the full-time mba which i thought was nuts but uh, i mean they were able to do it so uh, if they can do it others can too and these are good students i mean academically they've, they've been doing consistently well as well so uh it's all about managing your time uh after i think module one things got uh, a little better and uh, that's when i also took up a vac student position uh, allowing me to work 10 to 20 hours uh, a week. Uh, and, and that was very welcoming. I am able to do a lot of things outside of uh, the university, spend time with friends, spend time with family. Uh, but then again, it's, it's all about how you manage your time. Uh, if, if you're good with your time, I think, I think it will be pretty comfortable for the full-time MBA as well would be would be pretty comfortable for, for you. Max would have a different though. Uh. <laughs> uh, yeah, indeed. Um, I mean, I just mentioned briefly. Um, yeah, don't underestimate it. Uh, it, it, is a, it. It is somewhat tough. So I think um, officially they, uh, the, the school recommends or calculates with uh, um, an additional 10 to 15 hours per week that you should spend uh, on the studies. Um, yeah, of course, after work um, on the weekends, um, but still, there, there's still uh, enough time to, uh, for you, your social life and for family. So um, <clears throat> as a matter of fact, there are several uh, students in my cohort uh, who who have uh, kids and uh, and everything and uh, they are still um, coping with uh, with the content, so it, it's 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 a it's a tough ride. It's a it's going. I mean, I'm like uh, I don't know, like a bit more than halfway through now. So um, it is a tough ride, and uh, some modules are more demanding than others, um, but it's definitely uh, manageable. And um, it's yeah, it's not forever. I mean, it's uh, for a limited period of time and. Uh, yeah, it's, I mean, the feeling of being a student again, um, and yeah, especially with these uh, residencies and, and everything, um, it is definitely rewarding and it's something that you will not have again in, in your, your life, uh, I don't think. 
unless you would decide to go um, all out and do like a PhD or so afterwards, even on top of that. But, um, sorry to interrupt. I, I just wanted to ask Max. I, I know that we say to candidates, you know, expect sort of 10, 15, sometimes maybe 20 hours a week. Is, is that is that true? I mean, have you found that in your experience? Is that about a correct sort of guess? Um, I personally am doing less, but um, but um, if you want to be like really up to speed and, and really going deep into the subjects and everything, then I think it's accurate. Yeah. Okay. It's good to know we got it right. <laughs> Thank you very much, guys. Uh, Lawrence, let's uh, give a break to Ankit and Max and talk a little bit about uh, some admission uh, requirements. I see a question about, um, do you offer a GMAT waiver? And yeah, if you can briefly ex explain what are the, the admission requirements and what do you expect from the prospective students? Yeah, definitely. Um, so uh, yes, we do offer, well, we it's not necessarily a GMAT waiver, but we do have our own admissions test um, so that's traditionally been in place for the part-time MBA and, and actually this year we're bringing it in for the full-time MBA uh, as well. So that's um, it's been some really good news. Um, so if, uh, if you are maybe a bit put off by the GMAT, and I do understand that it, it does take a lot of preparation for a lot of people, um, there is a bit more flexibility on offer with our own admissions test. Um, so the idea is that it, uh, it takes two hours to complete. Um, it's more of a sort of honest assessment of where you are, as opposed to uh, an assessment of given an infinite amount of study time, where can you get to? So um, we recommend that students don't really practice for more than two or three weeks, um, maybe do two or three sort of uh, practice tests and then go, go and sort of take the take the real thing. Um, so those are happily now that's available for, for all of our programs. Um, in terms of the rest of the admissions requirements, uh, there's lots of sort of documents that you need to gather, um, uh, references from previous employers, uh, transcripts from your undergraduate. Um, you know, there's a couple of essays that you have to fill out, that sort of stuff. Um, there is also a uh, admissions interview. And I think for me personally, this is one of the more important parts of the process. Um, as Ankit says, like we don't have very large uh, class sizes i mean for all of the classes we're looking at maybe somewhere between 40 and 60 students and that's kind of by design because we want to create that sort of um very kind of close-knit environment so um it's important for us to assess whether a, a candidate is going to be a good fit within a small class size i mean with only 50 students you can imagine it only takes one or two with the wrong sort of attitude to, to spoil the experience for everybody else so what we really want to assess is is how sort of collaborative um a a uh, a candidate is um, we always say collaborative rather than competitive i don't really agree with that because it's still a business school it's still still quite competitive um but we do want students who are going to work to make sure that everybody succeeds rather than just saying you know like oh, I, I only care about my own grade i'm not interested in in helping with the rest of my group and that sort of sense um it is it is sort of a bit more of a european style of education i think uh, when you get to the US, it tends to be a lot more competitive based, you know, you're, you're competing against your uh, team members, whereas here we like to think of people working together to make sure that everybody in the class succeeds. So if you can bring that across in your um, in your application, then that definitely uh, that definitely helps. Yeah. Uh, a question just uh, came in uh, related to this. Uh, what is the minimum IELTS score needed? Oof, uh, I couldn't tell you uh, from the top of my head. Um, if you go to the website, uh, there's a full list of all of the various kind of uh, minimums that are required, IELTS, TOEFL, uh, all that sort of stuff uh, is there on, on the website. Great. Yeah, and for everyone who is uh, listening, we will send you a recording of this webinar together with a link to the uh, program website. So you can check all these um, requirements. Um, okay, another interesting question is, um, do I have the same chance to get hired by the same companies if I do the part-time MBA compared to the full-time MBA? So I guess this is about career realization. Yeah, I guess. So it's it's sort of yes and no. So um, there is a visa component that comes with the full-time program. Because you're studying full-time, uh, once you graduate, you are allowed to stay and work in uh, Germany for, I think it's automatically 18 months, and then it's reasonably straightforward to sort of extend it after that it's more of an administrative procedure than anything else um, so we do find that a lot of our students for the full-time program are moving to study with us because they want to 
uh, move geographically or, and get into the sort of German and European economy and, and really are keen to stay and work in Germany afterwards. So there is an array of companies that uh, those students end up working for. Um, if you were to study the part-time program, then that visa component is not uh, included. The government, because it's a, it's a part-time study, you know, there's, there's no automatic right to remain and work afterwards. Um, but saying that, um, you will still get access to the same career services provision that um, the full-time MBAs receive. And if you are able to come to Berlin or if you are based near campus or, or even as I imagine Max will, will know in, in Munich, um, there are a number of sort of extracurricular activities that happen outside of the classroom. So uh, company visits or the career fair or those sort of things. So in terms of where you might end up working after having done the program, um, there is uh, still the same access of opportunity to the same uh, companies in that sense it's just one comes with a administrative uh, sort of add-on as well and maybe one more word so you you won't no one will ever ask you if you did a part-time or a full-time mba you just have the mba period so no one will will ask that this is really it's, great to hear <laughs> yeah it's written on the certificate as well it just says mba the, the delivery method is incidental at that point yeah the experience and the knowledge matter right um, okay, Lawrence, if you allow me one more question to you. Uh, and yeah, I know this is an MBA um, webinar, but there is a, a person here interested in doing a, um, a program in cybersecurity. Uh, can you share if you are offering such um, programs and where you should look? Uh, we are launching a new master's program uh, starting in, I suppose, September 2023 in uh, analytics and artificial intelligence. So there will be a large cybersecurity component in that. And the analytics component of the full-time MBA may contain cybersecurity. I'm not 100% sure. Um, I'm not sure. Yeah, that's a nod. For, <laughs> fair enough. Um, so yeah, if someone's interested in studying that, they can they can check out the analytics and artificial intelligence masters. Um, maybe it's it, it will still be a bit of a broader degree. It's not specifically just artificial um, cybersecurity focused, but maybe it'll work then. Thank you very much. Um, okay, let's continue with uh, a question for Ankit and Max. Um, and the question is, uh, did you have to relocate for doing the program? How do you find uh, Berlin? I did have to move uh, from, uh, I mean, I left my job in Dubai and then I moved to India because the visa requirements were such that I had to apply at uh, the embassy in New Delhi. and. Uh, the relocation was quite easy. Uh, finding an apartment in Berlin is uh, uh, is a difficult task. Uh, but I mean, the university helps with uh, certain student accommodations, which, uh, uh, which are pretty good. I'm staying in one of them. Uh, Berlin is, uh, is very open-minded, very beautiful, very accepting. Uh, the summer has been uh, a little hotter than I expected it, but... Uh, uh, my experience of living in Dubai is coming in handy, so <laughs> so that's good. But otherwise, it's a beautiful, welcoming city. The people that I've met have been very friendly. Uh, I haven't encountered any uh, sort of racist activities as such, and I've been around quite a bit in uh, the six months that I've been here. Uh, so yeah, it's a, it's it's very refreshing to be in Berlin. Yeah, I did indeed not have to relocate. Um, I'm based in Munich, and uh, apart from a, a couple of travels uh, to Berlin, um, yeah, I did not have to relocate. But uh, I, I still know Berlin very well from from, from the past, and yeah, it's, it's definitely a, a great place to live in, at least for some time. So, um, just yeah. a quick follow, up, Max. So, for your cohort in in Munich, is do you find that the majority of that Munich cohort are they based in Munich full time? Is that why they've uh, the majority, uh, I'm not even sure if it's the majority, um, I would say maybe half of them or so. Um, so uh, it's, it's, it offers some geographical advantages, I think. So, for example, there's uh, one person, he travels, for, he is based in Zurich, and he chose Munich because it's just much closer. Um, there's a girl from Stuttgart who uh, goes to, uh, to Munich. Uh, and, uh, funny enough, um, a guy who is working in Dubai, and he also goes uh, more often than not to Munich because the flight connection is just better to Munich than to Berlin. 
I'm not going to start about the airport stuff, right? So, um, uh, yeah, so it's, it's, it, it, it has a graphical component as, as well. So, um, yeah, but I would say, I think at least half of them are based in Munich. Yeah. So is it quite common for people to fly in um, in the rest of the cohort, so the Berlin cohort? I mean, it's not just people who are based nearby to Berlin and Munich. Um, I think in Berlin, most of them actually live in Berlin and did relocate. Um, I know that the, the, there's one girl who travels from uh, from Mexico City, actually. Um, she, uh, yeah, she does this. <laughs> She's the one with the furthest uh, commute, so to say. Um, but she is going to relocate to Berlin for another job, I think. So um, that's also coming in handy then for her. Um, yeah, but I think in Berlin, most of them are actually located in Berlin and they did relocate uh, for, for the job or for whatever. Um, but also here, there's, uh, there's some people from Hamburg that are traveling to Berlin, some to Hanover. So, yeah, now I'm thinking about it. It's probably also, it's also a good um, part of a like, geographical component just to which city you're, you're closer. Thank you very much for um, sharing your experience. Um, guys, I want to remind you that you can ask your questions uh, anytime, just typing in the Q&A box. Uh, we are ready to answer. Um, I will um, uh, I'll ask one question to Lawrence now. Uh, we have a person um, here um, asking which program would you recommend for a person in, in their 40s with a couple of year, uh, years, not much managerial experience? Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess that's, I suppose you're in the happy position there where you'd probably be applicable to all programs, really, um, in, depending on the level of the managerial experience, also for the executive MBA anyway. Um, uh, I, I guess the guys would be able to tell me a bit better, but I think the average age for um, both of the programs really is sort of early 30s. Um, so that means there are people who are a bit older, there are people who are sort of approaching their 40s, but there are also some, some sort of younger hotshots. Um, I guess just the sort of very nature of the way that they're delivered maybe means that if you're a bit older and you've got maybe kids and you need a bit more flexibility, then perhaps it's more common that those sort of people end up on the online or the part-time program. But um, also maybe that's not the case at all. I mean, I don't know, Ankit and, and Max are there. Um, are there many people of that sort of age in, in your programs? In my program, there are two people that are of, of uh, whom I know of that they're uh, over forty. Yeah. So, yeah, for early forties. Yeah, that's uh, there, there are two or three of them. Yeah. We don't have anyone in the forties, but the oldest person that we have turned thirty-nine today. So, <laughs> uh, so there you go. I guess that's sort of. That gives you the kind of mix. Um, I mean, also as well, the executive MBA would be an option. Um, I guess it sort of depends on the person's uh, preferred delivery method and you know, sort of preferred outcomes in that sense. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's a it's a good spot to be in. Um, but we're not going to discriminate based on age in that sense. So it's not like if we received an application from someone in their forties to the full time MBA, we'd say no, 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 you're too old. You know, push you on to something else. I mean, it's 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 up to a personal preference at that point. It is great to hear. Um, okay, we, we don't have uh, any questions from the audience uh, right now. I will give them a little bit more time to, um, to type their questions. And I'll ask a question of my own uh, right now uh, to Ankit and uh, to Max. Um, one thing that you have learned so far that really surprised you. And yeah, I, I'm giving you a moment to think about it. That's a very interesting question, Nelly. Max, do you want to take the lead on this? I might need a couple of minutes to think about this. <laughs> well, define surprised. Um, to be honest, I mean, for, for me, uh, math has never been my strong, my strongest suit, for example. Um, and so I was surprised that, for example, in like uh, customer analytics, where there's a lot of like statistical things and all that, but I kind of understood this much better than, than I, I thought. So that's where I surprised myself um, in, in a way. Um, isn't that, yeah, I mean, there's, um, uh, yeah, I guess since I have not been exposed to an experience like that, um, there, the, the whole program is basically, uh, it, it was a surprise, especially in, in the beginning. So, uh, but to to 
drill a bit deeper, I also would <laughs> require a few minutes. So maybe Ankit, maybe you could think of something in the meantime. Actually, I was thinking around the same lines. Uh, you know, when uh, when we started accounting, uh, I never expected that I would enjoy accounting to the degree that I enjoyed it. And I think the the credit has to go to Per Olsen, our professor of, uh, of accounting, uh, because the way he taught it, and uh, it prompted me to, to take uh, uh, another elective with him in uh, accounting for, uh, uh, for startups. But it, it, it was very surprising to me because I thought that, you know, accountants, you go stare at your computer screen all day, looking at spreadsheets and looking at all sorts of softwares. And I never thought that I would, you know, like have any interest in something like that. But the way the 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 module was designed and the way Pear taught it, I think it was it was it was very, very refreshing and and it was very surprising for myself that I enjoyed it to the to the degree that I did. So yeah, thank you, Max, for for enlightening me on this. <laughs> Can I just ask Ankit, um, was the majority of the class like yourself? I mean, was it a group of people who, sorry, I'm phrasing that very badly. Was uh, Were there lots of people in the class who had studied accounting before and had studied those sort of finance courses before? Or were the majority like yourself who were kind of coming to it fresh? I think the majority of us uh, are coming to it fresh. There are people, uh, I mean, four or five uh, of of the cohort members who do come from an accounting background, who have been doing audits at EY or Deloitte or, or KPMG uh, in, uh, in, in their previous work experiences. But majority of us, yeah, I mean, we come from a STEM background, majority of us uh, at least. And yeah, we, we've never looked at uh, a balance sheet and we never knew that balance sheets must balance, so. <laughs> Yeah, it's similar. For, <laughs> yeah, it's 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 similar in the in, in my cohort. Like, there are a lot of engineers in there who are by design quite analytical. Um, I, I find, uh, which is which is good. Um, yeah, and I mean, some of them have have been exposed to some of the topics that uh, we we have in, in the modules, um, but uh, from a finance background or so, actually, not not so much. No. But yeah, like the, the engineers tend to be quite good at, at maths and uh, quantitative uh, things. Um, that's, uh, that's my experience. So they have a good grasp. And um, but what you said about the accounting class, I think I know which professor you mean. I think he left recently, right? Uh, and no, no, no. Maybe still okay, um, because then there's another finance professor who unfortunately left, um, uh, and he also was. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, not finance. I mean accounting professor. And uh, he was also extremely, uh, extremely good in uh, in a subject. And he also, like all of us, were surprised that we enjoy would enjoy accounting um, as much as we did. Great to hear. <laughs> um, okay, uh, Lawrence, uh, there is a question for you in in the in the Q and A box. Uh, there is this person saying, "I only got a bachelor's degree in engineering with the three years of uh, professional experience in my country, non EU country." Uh, can, uh, can my career background be considered um, in pursuance to study a full-time MBA? Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, so the minimum requirement is three years. And so, and that's three years from the point at which the program begins. So if you're two years and 11 months in, say, October, by the time the January comes around, you'll be up to three years. And so we would consider that sort of application. Um, uh, yeah, I guess... Um, as these guys have said, uh, engineering is a reasonably common sort of background. So you're probably in quite good company there to have had that more sort of technical technical background. And I think that's quite common for an MBA in general is that people who have had a reasonably sort of technical background in whatever field that is, and who are now looking to get those sort of broader uh, business management skills to then sort of take that next step. So if you've, if you've had quite a specific sort of engineering kind of uh, career so far then um the idea that you're coming to us um to to expand on those skills is, is perfectly fine um it's actually quite something that we like to see in an application is someone who recognizes where they're weak to, who recognizes where they don't have experience and and that sort of joined up thinking to say 
you know, I have these skills and I think that your school will give me these skills and that will get me to here in, in my career. Um, that, that shows a sort of level of self-awareness about themselves and, and about what we can offer as well that uh, we definitely like to, um, to see, yeah. Um, I guess it's a bit similar to the, to the person who was asking about, you know, if you're 40, I mean, in terms of that age difference, you'll probably have a slightly different experience of the class based on when you do it in your life. Um, you know, if, you, if you're coming at it with 15 years of work experience, you're probably going to be able to um, sort of provide a little bit more in terms of the class discussions and, and you know, that sort of thing, because you just have that extra experience as well. Um, whereas if you're coming to it at a relatively early stage in your career, then um, perhaps you won't be able to offer quite so much, but you can also learn a bit more from these sort of older or more experienced class members. So um, yeah, as long as you as long as you're over that three years threshold, then we'll definitely consider the application. Yeah. Okay. Um, if I may add something to this, so um, also in the part time MBA, I think the youngest participant is I think 24 or so. He also has a um, bachelor, like only a bachelor's degree. And as I said, there are a few, a couple of people who are um, in the early 40s and. Uh, yeah, this, this mix is definitely something that everybody profits from. Um, and in terms of what Lawrence just said about the application, like uh, where I'm now, where I want to go, how can the school help me? Uh, that's in general, uh, if, if you know what you want to do with this degree and not just do it because you want it or because you think you want it, um, then you will get much more out of the program um, than if you just do it because it sounds good or so. So that's something I would um, advise everyone to do, like really what where you want to go with this MBA. Um, because it is a lot of time and money and um, so make sure you, you you're not doing it because you think you want to or, or whatever because the the clearer your picture is where you want to go afterwards the, the more you can get out the problem it's a really good point actually and, and we will we see that in the application as well if, if someone's coming at it as you say max like because they sort of feel like they should do it or because it kind of sounds like you know something fun or whatever um, often that means the application doesn't then have the level the requisite level of sort of um, sort of self-assessment and, and sort of, uh, as you said, like identifying why specifically ESMT. Um, it's an issue we see with sense. applications that are like, oh, well, I, an MBA is good. And I want to do an MBA, and, you know, but they never actually address the fact that you know, why us rather than Bocconi or, or somebody else who, who offers a slightly different experience. So um, yeah, uh, self-awareness is, is the key in that sense, I think, yeah. Um, okay, guys, um, and Keith, Max, one last question uh, for you. Uh, right now, you're talking um, talking to a lot of uh, people who are interested in applying at uh, ESMT Berlin, um, prospective students, future students. So if you can give advice, uh, something to help them make uh, the best of their time there, uh, something that um, you maybe you did or didn't do or you wish you did, um, what you will say? I think it's very important for you to be honest to yourself in terms of uh, what you want to do and what uh, and how the school can can help you. Uh, I I saw the the question about whether you can get a job with a full time as a full time and or as a part time with the same company. I think that is completely dependent on you. Uh, the school will help you with whatever you want to do but you have to take the first step. If you don't take the first step, the school is not going to hand over anything to you on a silver platter because they will assume that everything is going okay. Yeah, we'll do regular check-ins with, with all the students and understand, okay, is everything going well with you? But if you say, yes, everything is going well with you, I will assume that, yes, everything is going well. Unless you say, hey, I, I, I need support with this. I'm trying to get into, let's say the automotive sector, I've got these five companies on board. I, I, I'm, I'm looking at these five companies as, as potential uh, uh, employers in the future. Do you think you can help me? Unless you ask this question, I don't think anyone's going to help you. So which is why it's very important for you to stay true to what you want and your efforts need to reflect that. And the, the sooner you start this, the better it's going to be because when you get into the program, I mean, I'm already six months into the program and I remember coming here in December as if it was yesterday. So time goes by really fast. So you got to be prompt. You got to stay active and you got to you got to stay true uh, to what you want. 
that 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 would be my two cents yeah if you ask me like um what i wish i would have done or so i mean i'm also still like right in the middle of the program so i hope i didn't lose too much um but uh yeah it's, it's definitely um to, to, uh, I mean, Anke mentioned, and it's, it's totally right. Uh, it is um, it is a lot of work, um, hard work, uh, but still try to enjoy it. I mean, it's an experience that won't come again. And um, especially for the part time MBA, it's these these residencies. Um, that's uh, yeah, that's just uh, a great part of the experience, like this personal interaction um, with with others. And uh, do cherish that, and do take advantage of the opportunities that the school um, provides you. Uh, like, yeah, when it comes to career services, and, I mean, I relatively recently started my new job, so it's not that relevant for me. Um, but um, so uh, if, if you're looking for a change or so, um, or maybe even do the full time MBA and get out of your current job, um, if you want to switch industries, um, yeah, then do take advantage um, of, of the services um, as good as you can. And uh, also go to these company visits in, in Munich. Uh, we went to to see Amazon, for example, for a couple of weeks ago, and uh, from there you get really like a, a shortcut to um, uh, to when it comes to applying to, for for new jobs, for example, if, if that is uh, your goal. But again, like it's it's important to know what you want, um, and then make sure that you get the most out of the school and be informed uh, what the school can offer you in uh, in this respect. But um, if you ask me what I wanted to, would have done more or so, uh, you have to ask me next year around this time. <laughs> then I probably can, can answer this question better. Thank you both for these uh, amazing answers. Um, I see uh, more questions in the Q&A box. Uh, Lawrence, if you allow me, uh, there is someone here um, interested in the global online MBA. Uh, and they're asking uh, if you can give us uh, information on available scholarships and uh, what kind of discount they can get from the tuition fee? Uh, yeah, um, yeah. There's there's a few different scholarships uh, available, and there's also uh, a few different discounts available. The the discounts are based on sort of early application. So um, for this program that starts in September, I'm not sure there are any available, but for the program that begins in January, there will be. Um, the easiest thing is to again go to the go to the website. There's a very long list of all of the different things. Um, uh, available yeah for those automatic discounts you don't have to do anything else you just have to fulfill the criteria um for some of the scholarships they're more sort of fluid based they're more sort of based on an application um uh, i would just say there's never any uh discrimination against applications that also request scholarships at the same time so i mean that you may as well there's really no reason why not to if you're given the opportunity um yeah they sort of change year on year and through um through our sort of connections to various sort of organizations so um yeah the easiest thing to do is, is to check the website that will give you an up-to-date list of everything that's available and, uh, and you can go from there great okay this is all from me and there are no more questions uh from the audience so uh Lawrence, if you have any final words uh, now is the moment Oh, uh, um, sorry, I hadn't prepared anything. Uh, I guess, um, well, thank you everyone for, for coming along. Ankit and, and Max, we do appreciate you taking the time. Um, I'm not going to bring up that big long list of application deadlines again, but um, just be aware that there are a few coming up. And so uh, the best thing you can do as an applicant is, um, if you have any questions at all, reach out to us. Uh, it's one of the benefits of our sort of relatively smaller class sizes is that we can spend a bit more time with our applicants. So yeah, don't be a stranger. If you get a question, um, please do get in touch.